in the whole gamut of all these courses, you are studying this particular course. Now this course, according to me, is the first course where you get introduced to what is called as the digital world. So I would like to call the title of this course as being digital. You know, the, the main thing that has happened in the last more or less about 70 years is that the world has changed from analog to digital. You will find that almost every interaction that you have, whether you go to the bank, whether you go to the post office, whether you go to a manufacturing facility, whether you go to a restaurant even, or wherever you go, you will find that the world has become digital. In the good old days when you went to kindergarten and you were told the numerals, you wrote the numeral two as like this. Now you get grown up and then you buy the Casio watch and uh, you will find that uh, it's about 200 rupees and you find that it's very good. And the Casio watch is a digital watch. And the same numeral two is coming up there as two and everybody accepts it, you know. Same thing is true about the numeral five. If it is this way, the numeral five in the digital world becomes this way and everybody accepts it. So you will find that whether it is photography, you can have a picture which is digital picture and you are transmitting that picture almost instantaneously to your friend. If you are on a computer or if you are on a mobile smartphone, you will find that you are listening to the music, which is also a digital music. So you will find that entire world, as a matter of fact, entire information world has become digital. So the most important part is the key element of the digital world is information. Now it could be in the form of numerals, right, the numbers that I have shown over here on the board, or it could be in the form of alphabets. Right? And they form the words and then you have got the word file, you can uh, edit it, you, you, nowadays you will find that people hardly write the documents, most of it is keyed in with the words that you use. So again, what is information? It, information could be numerals, information could be alphabets, it could be music. For instance, you have a musical score and that could be also a digital file. So you will find that that is also digital. Then you have got pictures and nobody imagined ever that pictures could be digital. The entire world of computer graphics uh, came up in the last 40 years and you will find that the first time when somebody said that if you have got a picture, you will find that there is a term called pixel. That is picture cell. So you can have a a sheet which is consisting of some pixels, 1068 by 1068 or whatever the density that you have, even when you are drawing your picture, you will find that the sheet, the, gra the, the drawing sheet that you have has got some ups and downs, it has got some crests and valleys and therefore you will find that some of it gets painted and therefore the digitization of the picture was a breakthrough in the sense that you could have still pictures and then you can also digitize motion. So these two things, when they came up in the digital form, it created the world of animation. So today you will find that digital movies and many other things are available in the three-dimensional form. 
okay then you look at the geometry which is two dimensional geometry or three dimensional geometry is in the digital form pictures in the digital form you last semester you did a course on uh, autocad and other things that was all digital so you could create a dot dwg file of a drawing now when i was a student was it possible answer is no that was a drawing sheet we had to go and draw and submit the drawing sheet there was no way i could submit a file which is a dot dwg file actually so obviously the things have changed in fact if you look at all the five senses whether it is uh, tactile sensing is also now digital so the touch for instance the pressure can also be digitized temperature is can be digitized you will find thermometer which is in the digital form blood pressure is also digitized so all the signals you will find which is essentially information is digitized so you will find that there is a art of the digital world there is a science of the digital world enormous amount of electronics is required in fact the whole science or the whole development of digital electronics and part of it you will be studying in your another course of electronics this semester so you will understand that there are many foundation blocks which really allow you to play with the digital world so essentially what we are saying is that the arts of the digital world the science of the digital world and the technology of the digital world is all around us and if today you want to get yourself uh, in the education you want to become the modern engineer you must be uh, acquainted with the digital world because the next 25 years next 40 years you are going to be dealing with the when you see the crane in a construction that crane is operated through a digital control if you see the milling machine in case of a workshop that milling machine is operated through a controller which is a digital control any device that you see you will find that either the control is a digital control or the information is a digital information the file that you are dealing with is a digital file so frankly speaking the the reason why we are trying to introduce this course is because we are trying to introduce you to the digital world and you should become capable of thinking of the digital world and that is the reason why we want to do this now when you have got the man and the machine and when you are interacting with it there is has to be some means of interaction there has to be some communication there has to be some language of interaction between the man and the machine and that language is not telugu that language is not hindi that language is not english that language is not marathi obviously these languages are incapable of being considered as the languages for man machine interaction so there has been a huge number of languages over the years that have come along and there is certain structure of those languages there are hierarchy of those languages there is something called as machine level language there is something called as user level language what is so good for you may not be so good for the machine so your language gets translated in variety of forms and then when it is brought to a level where the digital electronics can handle it that's called as the machine level language so definitely you need to understand a language as i said there are many machine or languages there are also many user oriented languages fortran and pascal and c and c++ there is also a very modern language which is called python and in this course unlike your other colleagues in other colleges and other institutes this is probably the first institute in the country which is going to teach the students the python language and python is a very powerful language it is an interpretive language you can download the interpreter on your own computer it's an open source language the material is available all around and therefore you can play around in your room you can do whatever you like you will find that it's a very user friendly language and therefore we have decided to introduce and by the way if you read economic times about a month back there was an article in economic times since all of you are very worried about your jobs and future you will find that the maximum shortage of programmers in the whole world as well as in the country is of people knowing python language so if you become 
very good at Python language programming, I am sure you have got a job. Okay? So that is the reason, another reason why we want to make sure that we teach you Python language. So language is the second part of this course. Today, we are not interested in telling you, because when you want to teach a language, you have to teach the alphabets, you have to teach the rules, you have to teach the grammar, you have to teach the constructs, and so on and so forth. One language is not important. You want to get a bird's eye view. You know, when you see a movie, you will find that there's a long shot, and then it zooms in on the village, and then they show you the hero and the heroine and the villain, and then the story unfolds. So today is a long shot as to why we want to study it. As I said to you, that this language is a very important part, which we want to understand why the language is required. It's a man-machine interface, and that is very important for us.